now from the makers of cold water Omo. Thick, Beno, thick. There must be something. Oh, just a minute, Mother. You thought we were tricking you with Black is Death, didn't you, Manor? That was the brief. Mannering said that the course didn't really finish when we left the center, that there'd be other tests. Unexpected tests, to make sure that you wouldn't reveal any details of course A7. But what if it all went wrong? What if you found yourself on trial for treason? Well, then I'd contact Colonel Mannering and he'd clear me. Make sure that I... The pigeon. I have a pigeon, a homing pigeon. I can release it and it'll go straight to center 53. Colonel Mannering will then contact me within the hour. Within the hour? Well, it can't be too far away, then. As the crow flies. Well, get that pigeon, Minot, and we may get Mrs. Peel and Colonel Mannering. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 7, the final episode of this story in which John Steed drops in on Center 53, where he and Mrs. Peel call Colonel Mannering's bluff regarding a case of interrogation. John Steed and Mother had managed to piece a few fragments of the case together. They now knew that there was an organization which was using their own red tape to gain information from various military secret agents. They knew this organization was run by a man called Colonel Mannering and that his headquarters was an old house known as Center 53. But no one knew where this house was or how to get there until Minnow remembered the pigeon. John Steed called for a helicopter immediately and from a spare piece of ground near Minnow's apartment prepared for action. Right. Release her on a sign from me, Minnow. Right. And the best of luck, sir. Okay, pilot. Start her up. Very good, Mr. Steve. Ready? All ready. Right. Let her go now, Minnow. Minnow opened the wicker basket. The pigeon fluttered out, stretched its wings, and took to the sky. Right. Follow that pigeon. In the interrogation room at Centre 53, Colonel Mannering paced up and down, slapping his riding crop against a well-polished black boot. The door opened, and two burly officers pushed Mrs. Peel into the room. Manners make it mad. Uh, come in and sit down, Mrs. Peel. That's a little more polite. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, we'll begin with all you know about John Steed. Oh, you've got to be joking. Neither of us could have that amount of time. Colonel Mannering slammed his riding crop down hard on the table. You will take this interrogation seriously, Mrs. Peel. There will be no sleep, no food, no water until you cooperate. Oh, can't I even have a cigarette? One of those awful ones that are custom made with Virginia and Turkish tobaccos and a preponderance of oriental herbs. What? You're careless the way you leave them around, aren't you? I should have thought with, with your training you'd not have been so careless. Yeah. You will talk. Tell me everything I want to know. Everything. Where is Steed at this moment? Where is he? John Steed was hanging on like grim death as the helicopter skidded about in the skies above Center 53. They'd lost sight of Minnow's pigeon. Oh, can't see it anywhere now, sir. I'd better go down. She must have gone to roost down there. Let's see what lies below, shall we? Right. The helicopter descended rapidly, Steve peering through a pair of binoculars. The pigeon had gone to roost, all right. 
It fluttered in and settled on the reception desk. Sergeant Rasker picked it up. I say, Rasker, someone in trouble? Yeah, it looks like it, Mr. Mullard. Uh, let's see. Yes, this is Minnow's pigeon, isn't it? The colonel will have to be informed at once. The colonel was still busy with Mrs. Peel. She was undergoing that wretched sound treatment. The truth, Mrs. Peel, the truth about John C. He doesn't know himself. How should I know? I'm not my partner's keeper. I thought I've always told you never to interrupt an interrogation, Rasko. Sorry, sir, but this is the ride. It's Minnows. I see. Right. And one of you men take over here. Right, Colonel. Mannering left the room and marched angrily along the corridor. Well, it's Minnows' pigeon, all right, Colonel. That I can see for myself. And there's been a helicopter following it. What? Just reported landing in the grounds. Steed. It must be John Steed. They're onto us. Get two men and cover the rear entrance to the bar. Uh, that's all very well, sir. But it's a big ass. There are at least a dozen other ways in. And there'll be an armed man on every one. Open the armory, all the guns you can find. I'll summon our trainees. Uh, sound the emergency alarms. This must be a general call. All right, sir. All right, sir. A few moments after that, bells rang throughout the centre, followed by the sounds of running feet as the men rushed to the main hall for instructions. What's going on? I say. Well, gentlemen, are we all here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Charlie, I see Good. Right now, this is the nature of a surprise test. We have arranged for an intruder to break into the centre. Your task will be to deploy and fight him. We'll each be armed with a pistol. The pistol will be loaded with the blanks, of course. Uh, Rasker, how about the pistol? Yes, sir. When you find the intruder, you will shoot to kill. And there will be ten merit points for the lucky man. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, sir. Who's playing the intruder? A good friend of ours. He has just arrived by helicopter. You can't fail to recognize him. Bowler hat, impeccably dressed, carries an umbrella. Uh, some of you may even know him. Uh, Steed. John Steed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Off you go, then, chap. Never get ten points for the lucky man who kills him. Mrs. Peel, in the interrogation room, heard the rumpus going on down the corridor. She said to the officer guarding her, Shouldn't we go and join him? My orders were to see that you were remained here, alone. But those were alarm bells. This is an emergency. I really think we shouldn't be excluded. Let's go... Stay where you are. That's an order. Now, don't get up or move. Oh, don't be such a silly soldier. That gun's not loaded. Oh, yes, it is. And I have no hesitation in firing it. Are you really serious? Of course. But this is a training center. This isn't for real, Just you know? stay where you are, or you'll find out. In that case, I think I shall have to accept your challenge. Mrs. Peel, who had been sitting calmly on a wooden chair, rose to her feet and, grasping the chair back, flung it at him. When the revolver went off, Mrs. Peel moved in quickly. <laughs> the fight didn't last long. Mrs. Peel got a good hold and threw the guard across the room. The door and stole quietly up the passage just as John Steed opened one of the windows at the back of the house. There was a guard in the room. Stay where you are. Don't move. Come out from behind the curtain. The guard advanced and bent down to see what had slumped to the floor. He drew the curtains apart. John Steed said, Good afternoon. And hit him with the steel rim of his bowler. Then chaos began to reign. <laughs> Mrs. Peel, coming up the passage, ran straight into Rasker. Here, yeah, yeah, Mrs. Peel, what are you doing? What? Sorry, got a thing against firearms today. Mrs. Peel did a splendid high kick and knocked Rasker's gun down the passage. A few moments later, Rasker followed it. John Steed, coming up the passage, stepped neatly over Rasker's body and picked up his gun just as Mullard and a crowd of other men raced up. Hands up, Steed. Steed obliged. I say, but we're supposed to kill him, aren't now, we? I saw him first. No, I did. Now, no, just no, a minute, just a minute. Hold on, hold it's on. Mine, it's mine. It's ten points for the kill, isn't it? Well, then, there are five of us here. Why don't we all shoot at once and claim two points each? Uh, I say, oh, that's good. a good plan. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. All right, all right then. I think so. One, two, three. No! Mrs. Peel dashed forward, did a great leaping roll over the group of officers, and landed in front of Seed. No! I say! Those guns are loaded with real bullets. Oh, come now, Emma. You just want the ten points for yourself. Look, we've all been duped. This whole course is a fake. A She's fake. right, you know. Jolly good deal. Excellent. Testing their gullibility, eh? Trick them. 
See how they react to the persuasive talk of the enemy, eh? Mannering is the enemy. I'm telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Is she? Uh, don't forget that a ten merit points at stake, gentlemen. Those guns are loaded with live ammunition. Please believe me. Very convincing, but not quite convincing enough. Eh, hey, gentlemen? Uh, might I make a suggestion? There's a simple way to see who's bluffing. Uh, you, uh, Mullard, isn't it? Uh, point your gun at Colonel Mannering and pull the trigger. I'll count to three. One, two... All right. Why not? No, no, no. No, no. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Mannering dived to the floor as the bullet crashed into a light. Steed stepped forward and hit Mannering hard on the back of the neck with his umbrella. Oh! <gasps> right. <laughs> Gentlemen, shall we adjourn to the bar? I need a drink. Don't you, Mrs. Peel? Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omen. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden. <laughs>